everybody, it's Betsy. Welcome back to my channel, M.E. My Hook and I. And today is going to be all about um, accessing my port. So if you are squeamish and this is not your thing, <laughs> you might want to not watch this video. Um, I got my port surgery done in July. So there's what my scar looks like about four months later. And a home health nurse did train my husband how to access it himself and me. But I did like lots of searches on the internet to watch other people access their port just as supporting education. So by all means, do not use this as the truth or as your only training to access yourself. But if you two are trying to reinforce the skills that you have been taught, I hope you find this helpful or if you just find this sort of thing fascinating, keep watching. All right, so right now, Stephen is starting to prep his face. Uh, that was not on camera. <laughs> um, that is the sterile kit, and that has most of the things we're gonna be using, but he'll be pulling out a few more things here in a minute. You have already washed and sanitized your hands. Um, you'll notice he has a, yes, I need that. He has a mask on. So he is not using the mask in the kit. Um, because, uh, oops, let's show you. Now this is your sterile fill field. I end up using the sterile gloves that are wrapped up in this mask over here. So when you're putting this down, explain to us what you're doing here, Steven. So right now I'm opening it and touching just the very, very edges of it. And sometimes this comes apart really easy and sometimes it's stuck together just a little bit. You have to be careful when you're doing that. Like right, right now. Like right now, So I'm just opening it up. This is going to give us our sterile field to use. And there's one side that's shiny and one side that is matte. We want the shiny side down, matte side up. So. I'll put that right here. Now there's a difference between sterile and clean. Sterile means it's gone through a process to uh, actually sterilize it. And in order to access my port, you're, we need to be sterile, not just clean. So that's why we've got that field. All right, show us, I've now got it on that. So show us what's going on. All the other stuff in here, we're gonna turn this over on top of it. So you don't wanna to touch anything that's in that bag without your gloves on. Um, we have a so medium pair of gloves that come in the kit, but Stephen busted these. So I actually use these to brace my port for him, um, which is not something the nurse taught us to do. It's just something that we found helpful. Of our sterile, sterile saline. So we'll get an ice pack out of the freezer. Right, so again, that's a sterile saline, so you don't want to touch it until down a little lower, until you have gloves on. And I just asked my daughter to get me an ice pack out of the freezer because I found if I put that on my port for some reason, it's showing my, the three dots on my port. All right, this is a Huber needle. I believe it's a three quarter inch and that is what the size that I need. They come in different sizes and you'll have to troubleshoot that with your home healthcare team. And again, that's sterile and he doesn't have gloves on yet. So he doesn't want to touch it. You're just dropping it on the field. Yeah, that's the only one we have left, so. Uh, yeah, we found the dressing that comes in the kit, the Tegaderm, is uh, not good for my skin. It breaks me out into a horrible rash. This one's a little different too, so that'll be interesting. Uh, we have been training my caregiver to do this, and so we nice. had a little bit of an accident with our uh, with our spare dressings. All right, so there's his extra large sterile gloves. That's all we need, right? Oh, we need the. Uh... We need a bio patch and um, what is that called? 
the, the bio patch. That's the ultra site. This ultra is the bio site. patch. And that is just a chlorhexidine circle that goes behind my needle and keeps it. And Sarah is showing you the. What did you say that was? It's the ultra site. The ultra site. I don't know why I can't think of that. You just can't see it, can you? Ultra side up. And pray it doesn't roll off the yeah, circle. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's, uh, that's everything we need for. Yep. All right. So now Stephen is going to put on his gloves. And actually, I usually do at this point, but I'm gonna wait <laughs> since I have the camera on it. So you sterilize your hands again, just an extra measure of safety. <laughs> All right, and the sterile gloves show you which one is left and which one is right. Open one side at a time, and the wetness on there is from the uh, what's that called? Hand sanitizer. So, notice he's only touching the cuff of the glove because the rest of it is sterile. So, if he touches that at this point, we have to throw out that pair of gloves. So, he can touch the inside of the paper because it's sterile. And he can touch the fingers of his sterile glove, but so he can only go inside now because technically the cuff is not sterile. Well, technically it is, but you're not supposed to touch it. Anyway, you're the, allowed. <laughs> the, the outside, the outside of the glove that's out here is sterile. Yep. The inside is not. So, and the way it comes in there, it's it's folded over. You get the inside. Great. Yep. All right, so we are going to Sir, can you pull that paper off from organizes his sterile field. So that's the dressing we're using. Gauze, sterry strips. Skin prep. We don't use the gauze and we don't use that tagaderm dressing. So he puts it off the field to get it off. Tape we don't use because she's allergic to it. And then Huber needle here. There's uh, the lovely paper measuring tape I've talked about before that I like to use <laughs> for my yarn projects. All right, and that is an alcohol swab stick. There's one in that package. You do alcohol and then either betadine or chloroprep. I was allergic to the betadine, so we use chloroprep. And then he's got your tweezers, ultrasight, and everything. So now we are going to turn the camera around on me and show how he preps. And I'm gonna get my sterile gloves on and set the camera up so we don't have to touch it anymore. All right, so you can see I am pink because I Put an ice pack on my chest to get the bumps in my port to show you can sort of see the top two there there is a third one down here yep, I see him. and we have found it more helpful for me to put on sterile gloves and brace the port when he goes to put the needle in rather than um him trying to brace the port and put the needle in so i have to get sterile too um, and I'm not entirely sure how we're going to show you <laughs> when he actually puts the needle in because neither one of us can touch the camera at that point because we'll be sterile, but we'll do our best. So I am now going oh. to, I need hand sanitizer, sanitize my hands and put my sterile gloves on. And I like to do this before he's, uh, sterilizes or cleans my chest so I don't reach over it and accidentally touch it. So technically I'm not doing anything yet, but I don't like to reach over the site after he's sanitized it. So I'll fast forward this. So like you can touch it after that, but you don't want to. Um, it just makes it, it makes it a little bit easier. 
So that way you don't accidentally touch something you not to. Okay. So you can use your hand. So the first thing is alcohol, and that is to clean any oils or lotions and also sterilize. An area of what we're doing here. So you scrub the port and then everywhere around it that might be under a dressing. Then there are three chlor prep swabs for extra measure, I guess. <laughs> and you do the same thing. You start by scrubbing the site and then rubbing it all over anywhere the bandage will touch. And our home health nurse taught us to do it in circles just to make sure you cover everything. But they now say as long as you're just scrubbing it with the swab, it's fine. Uh, this is just how we learn to do it, so that's how we do it. So this is the second chlorhexidine swab. Does it hurt when that happens? Nope. That's a good question, sir. Number three. That's a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure it's extra clean. Cause I think it's really clean right now. Mm-hmm. All right, so now he is, while we're waiting on this to dry, he is gonna connect the ultrasite to the tubing that's already connected to the Huber needle. So there are those. So you take the clear cap off. Under you know most circumstances, you still wanna be careful that you're nice and sterile when you're doing this. And that goes clear to clear, which clear end to clear end. And then I you- I changed that, that used to be a blue cap. Uh, yeah, I still get blue caps sometimes. Really? All right, there's your sterile saline. That, um, the ultrasite is a push in and screw mechanism. Good job, awesome. So now he is going to squirt the saline through to prime the needle. And if you squirt yourself in the face, you say, remember your baptism. <laughs> Don't do it on me. It's got to be sterile, man. All right. My foot has been... Whatever. Okay. All right. So this is where I start hunting for the three dots I have found. Mine sits kind of weird. So if I press the bottom of it down, you can see that bottom one... And then you can see the top three. And I just sort of hold that so he can see it. And he shoots straight in the middle with the needle. I don't know if you can see that on camera. You can see it right there. No, you definitely see the two one, two of them. All right. Uh, so he takes the little plastic sheath off the needle. And I'd rather you get it in correctly than show it on camera. <laughs> I can kind of see the top two. Let me look in the mirror. Oh, boom. Oh, there you go. Turn the shoulder back a little bit more, please. Mm. Felt good. Now you check for blood return before you put the dressing on. It goes in. Blood return. Woo! It's always a happy day when it only takes one. <laughs> so I felt it go in, but also felt we hit the back, hit the back of the port. So there you go. It's it really like yeah. It's really hard to access yourself. I mean, technically, I'm trained to do it, 
but I find that I hook up or slip to the side or something, you really, you need someone who can go, whose arm isn't connected to you, who can go straight in, so. All right. So, at this point, I don't need to be sterile. I don't really like the feeling of this hanging, so I just grab it. Um, and he's gonna use the skin prep. Some people don't need to use skin prep, but I found I got a rash without it, so. Um, we do that. What is skin prep? Usually I hmm? like to do it after I put the bio patch in, but it doesn't really matter. You've opened it now. We'll just, I just like to, anyway, go ahead. First. No, go ahead with the. And set this down. I know, I'd rather you, sorry. I should have said anything. I should have just let you do it. But you also don't want to get the bio patch wet, so. And anywhere that the bandage touches, I want this to be spread around because technically it's the bandage that I'm allergic to. <laughs> the adhesive. Yeah, I don't get that. Like that? And this just creates a barrier from the adhesive in my skin. I still sometimes break out in a rash, but it's not near as bad. And then that's the bio patch. It goes between the, the needle and my skin, around the needle and my, between the butterfly thingies. Yeah, I think I get that. Oh. All right, so there you are, accessed. That's what it looks like from the side, and now we just put the bandage over. <laughs> there. Um, oh, all right. Yeah. So you just peel it back and you're off, like, yeah. This is a smaller one, looks like. Mm, I just think the clear part is smaller. So straight on like that? Mm -hmm. Mom, is it, does it hurt when you do that? Nope. Yeah, I think this might be one that Jess gave us. Right. What do you mean? I'll pinch around it. It's not near as comfortable either. Haven't gotten my delivery yet this week, which is like far from the course. So we may end up tra changing this dressing at some point. So you have the scissors in there? Yes. All right, then I like to tape this up so that, cause I don't, I don't like this hanging down between my chest uncomfortable so I tape this up with a steri strip and technically I don't have to have gloves on anymore. Ew this feels awful. Okay. The dressing it's I'm just super plastic. All right before I tape that I'll let him go triple check. There's mm -hmm. not another one. Mm -hmm. All right so we're just stuck with this bandage until I can get a hold of the pharmacy company and have them send me the right one. <laughs> I kind of had to take what I could get for pharmacy companies because even though uh, this is Atlanta, um, a lot of other companies were having problems with staff and wouldn't take me on as a patient because of COVID. So maybe after that, I will get to choose a better <laughs> supply company. Anyway. I actually need to do an infusion today, so we'll hook up the bag as well. Uh, they send my bags pre-filled. And because they're not spiked yet, uh, we don't have to refrigerate them, so. Once it's spiked, it lasts for 24 hours. I don't know why you would spike it and not use it, so.
and it's not at all straight, but you know. Cheers. Cheers. I hooked my IV pole to my wheelchair <laughs> so I could be a little more mobile. And then I have random hooks around the house, like in the bathroom, <laughs> by my yarn, <laughs> by my bed. And I hook it on the wall when I'm stationary. All right, so what did we just see here? Uh, oh, I didn't see. You squeezed the chamber. Squeeze that twice to get us prepped and get us going. And then you have to prime the line, which gets uh, the saline going down into the line. It's gravity fed, and that is uh, a valve that opens it on and off and determines the flow rate for what it's going to do. I do my bag over about four hours, and for me, that means I have to turn that all the way open. So then you take this off, and then it's a uh, pushing screw. So there you go. Now I'm dripping. Well, let's make sure we're unlocked with this box. Well, yeah, I'm unlocked. <laughs> yes, drip, yeah. drip, 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 drip. Let's talk about the time he left it locked and it stayed on the wall and I didn't drip for hours. I was so mad because <laughs> it's not terribly convenient to be hooked up. Anyway, I hope that's helpful, and uh, I'm going to go call the pharmacy and try to get the correct bandage. Yay! So, for those of you who were yelling at me <laughs> to take the paper off my dressing, yes, we did finally figure that out, that this was a completely borderless dressing, and that was a paper that was over it. But I am actually about to de-access and I wanted to show this because it stayed down really nicely for me. And um, if you've seen any of my other videos with past dressings, I had the orange kind of plasticky stripe that went down the two sides. And that was always causing some sort of rash around the border of my bandage. And um, I'm really digging the borderless. It was super comfortable. I don't have a rash. It stayed in place. We're looking good. So I did eventually take off that paper and I actually, I did ask my pharmacy if they would actually send me more of these borderless dressings, but they were out of stock. So I ordered them from Amazon, which uh, honestly cost me like half a month's worth of supplies to pay out of pocket. Uh, I guess I should be thankful that my uh, insurance covers so much of my daily infusions because, yeah. Um, anyway, it was a good week with the borderless dressing on the fan. <laughs> <laughs>